First up, we take a look at the global and national economic picture. It's filled with uncertainty, and as University of Wyoming economist Ann Alexander tells our Leslie Wagoner, when that's the case, other nations often invest in the United States, but that's not always a good thing. And in a talk that you gave yesterday about the economic forecast for this year on a national level, you said something that really caught my ears. Headwinds both economically and psychologically are coming at us mm -hmm. in the U.S. What, what did you mean by that? Well, some of it is, is definitely um, domestic headwinds, psychological headwinds. Um, the, the fact is that since we've just been through this multi-year recession that was so deep and so severe, it generally takes about 10 years to recover all of the economic indicators after a recession that is that severe. Mm -hmm. So we still see relatively high rates of unemployment, especially long-term unemployment. Um, we're seeing um, the baby boomers start to retire, so our labor force is starting to, to, uh, to shrink a little bit. And then there's the fact that um, we have um, a psychological impact on a generation um, because of the fact that they graduated or came of age during a recession. A lot of studies show that the Great Depression era and other generations who have graduated during the middle of a recession tend to be a lot more cautious with their investments. They tend to be um, less likely to open new businesses. Um, and so, the, and that's not to even mention the fact that they tend to have a ding on their long-term earnings because they start in lower positions and um, lower quality jobs. And so, so economically, that will affect our long-term income growth. And psychologically, it causes people to become a little bit more cautious, maybe act a little bit more like turtles when things are coming at them. Psychologically, on the international scale, we have ISIS, we have um, the European Union slowing down again. China looks to be slowing down. Ukraine and Russia are still um, having some issues across their border, and that emanates out to all sorts of different kinds of markets, uh, including us. So at the moment, the U.S. looks like a really strong economy compared to everybody else, even though we're still just kind of moderately bumping along and, and doing much better than we were a few years ago. Um, but, but any of those things could come along and knock us off track a little bit too. So would you say a lot of uncertainty right now? Or are we yeah. rocking along pretty good? What do you think? You know, we are rocking along pretty well. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Um, but, but a lot of people for the past few months have been saying we're the most beautiful horse in the glue factory. Oh. Um, which means, you know, we're, we are doing much better. Um, China's growth is slowing down. And that's not to say that they're going to go into a negative growth period, but just that their growth rate is getting slower. And that affects commodity markets, that affects all sorts of different, uh, different things about having to do with inflation rates, our trade deficit, and so on. Um, when you look at the European Union, the entire continent is looking at um, the potential of deflation rather than mm. healthy inflation. Um, they are also looking at a slowdown, just economically speaking, in Germany. Greece uh, has uh, recently elected a new government that um, would like to discuss uh, restructuring of their debt agreements, meaning mm. um, they would like to get out from under their austerity agreements. Mm. And Germany doesn't sound like they're terribly interested in this discussion. So there's, there's, a, there's just a lot of potential bumps in the road. Is it more uncertain than it's been ever? No, of course not. But right now it just seems like there's a confluence of really um, interesting events that could kind of swing one way or another. Well, so getting to Wyoming, getting to the local, what effects do you think these will have on us as a state? Well, something that, that I think is important for us to remember is that because we're the, 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 this really handsome horse, uh, the United States, we have um, a very strong dollar. Our currency is incredibly strong. That tends to mean that it's harder for um, foreigners to buy our goods. So we'll start to see our export sectors uh, be impacted by that. Um, here in Wyoming, what that means, our biggest export sector um, outside of the energy sector is 
tourism. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes more expensive for people to come to Yellowstone National Park or see Devil's Tower, um, to come to Frontier Days. So we may see a reduction in the number of foreign visitors in our tourism trade. And then here at the university, we have a very strong international student population. Wyoming has such affordable tuition rates but it still can impact their cost of living when our international students are coming from abroad. So, so we could see some impacts on that as well. Wyoming has a, a huge savings account um, to buffer us from these boom and bust mm -hmm. periods. As an economist, what do you think we should do? Oh boy, that's a, that's a really great question. You know, when they set that up, as you pointed out, it was because we didn't, in the last few times that we've had bus, we didn't have something to fall back on. Um, so these different pots of rainy day accounts have been set up. Um, the question is always, when is it raining? Is it, is it raining now? Because we are seeing a reduction in natural gas prices, in oil prices, in coal prices. Um, does, is this when the rainstorm begins? Or does the rainy day mean the time when everything just basically stops in the energy sector? Um, boy, if I knew the answer to that, then I could tell you what, I, what, what the best time is to use it. But to me, I think one of the things that I've been hearing a lot out of Cheyenne that makes a lot of sense is that um, our infrastructure, the long-term investments that we make in things like education, highways, bridges, um, sewer systems, those, those are the backbone of the economy and they make it possible for us to grow in the long term regardless of what our industry looks like. Um, we need to have a good transportation infrastructure, we need to have a good inf education infrastructure. Um, so if the rainy day account is directed towards those things that have long ongoing returns on investment, if you will, then I'd say it's a good use of the money. If we're using it to shore up things that are sort of um, either really small one-time things or even ongoing expenses, we can't afford to do that. Um, you simply can't with a with an investment fund. You have to you have to use it judiciously. So so I would say I like what I'm hearing when they're talking about using it for infrastructure. Okay. Do you see any advantages for Wyoming in the current situation that we're in nationally? You know, one of the, I think that we have, because we have socked some money away just in case to buffer us, I think that actually is a great advantage. Um, not a lot of states, as we saw during the Great Recession, a lot of states just tanked, uh, they went into the trough and they had no way to um, continue to provide public services, they had to cut back on things. Um, we are not in, we're not going to be in that situation, I don't think, uh, during our next bust. So I think all told that strategy has, has put us in a better position. No doubt during the recession we had a much easier time of it simply because our economic structure was different and the markets that we um, look to most for economic growth were still doing well. Um, Going forward, it's hard to say whether that's going to happen, but I think the fact that the state's been investing in diversification efforts will help. Good. Well, thank you, Anne. Interesting conversation. Absolutely. Thank you, Leslie. It was fun to be here. Yeah.